So, your server catches on fire. What do you do next? 안녕하십니까? Nicolas Inida and today we're going to talk about disaster recovery. Last weekend here in South Korea the services of the internet giant Kakao were disrupted because of a fire in one of their main data centers. If you don't live in Korea all you need to know is that Kakao is huge. It basically provides the services of WhatsApp, Uber, Stripe, Google Maps, Gmail and Spotify combined along with video games, online shopping and even banking. Other companies suffered as well, but Kakao services were the ones that took the longest to come back up. This video isn't specifically about Kakao because we don't have all the details yet. They haven't published a postmortem and there is no point in speculating what went wrong. But since Kakao is massive and this disruption affected many users, many people are talking about disaster recovery, high availability, backups and fault tolerance. So that is what this video is about. Today I would like to introduce you to the fascinating world of cloud design and disaster recovery. Before we start, it's important to keep in mind that Kakao isn't alone in this. Many companies, some of the biggest ones in the world, can and go offline from time to time. Back in October of 2021, Facebook had an outage that lasted almost seven hours, losing 5% of its stock price and $60 million in ad revenue. The outage was caused because a Facebook employee sent the wrong command and disconnected Facebook from the public internet. Even the people working at Facebook couldn't enter the building to fix the problem because their badges weren't working to open the doors. In the same month, Roblox, a video game platform with more than 50 million daily active users, was also down for 72 hours, losing $1.5 billion on market cap and $15 million in ad revenue. The truth is that no one can be online 100% of the time. The systems we use every day are more fragile than we think. With computers that have to be online 24-7, 365 days a year, at some point a battery will explode, a RAM will die, or a hard drive will corrupt. Not even AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure, the biggest cloud platforms in the world, can promise you 100% uptime. Usually the best they can do is to give you three to four nines. The nines is how we measure uptime levels for an online service. A service that is online 99% of the time, a service with two nines, is a service that will be offline for 3.65 days in a year. 99% of the time sounds good, but 3.56 days is a long time. If the system is online 99.9% .9 of the time, a system with three nines, it will still have a downtime of 8.77 hours in a year. 99.99, four nines, translates to 52.60 minutes offline per year. And 99.999, five nines, which is very hard and very expensive, translates to 5.26 minutes a year. AWS, for example, guarantees 99.5 to 99.99%. So now that we know that even the best of the best go offline from time to time, let's see what are the most common disaster recovery strategies and architectures. Every company, no matter the size, needs a disaster recovery plan. The bigger the company, the bigger the plan. In the case of massive companies, they have to plan for physical disasters, like natural disasters, civil unrest, loss of power, etc. They need to have a plan to evacuate their people, cooperate with government agencies, and so on. The benefit of using a cloud provider like AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure is that we don't have to worry about that, they do it for us. But we still have to come up with a recovery plan on the software side. There are two things that we have to decide when coming up with a recovery plan, RTO and RPO. RTO stands for Recovery Time Objective. To find it, just ask yourself. In case of a disaster, how much time can we be offline for? And that is your RTO. RTO is the time it can take a service to recover. The time that passes since the disaster to the recovery. RPO stands for Recovery Point Objective. To find it, just ask yourself. In case of a disaster, how much data can we afford to lose? And that is your RPO. RPO is the time that has passed since your last backup or snapshot until the time of the disaster. 
For example, if my RPO period is one hour, I will back up my database every hour, which means that if I take a backup at 7 p.m. and the server explodes at 7.45 p.m., 45 minutes of data is the amount of data I will lose when I restore my database from the 7 p.m. backup. Before you come up with a disaster recovery plan, you need to know your RTO and RPO. The shorter your RTO and RPO are, the more complex and expensive your recovery solution will be. The longer they are, the simpler and cheaper the recovery solution will be. But also more data will be lost and the service will be down for a longer time. Now let me show you three disaster recovery strategies and architectures for three different RTO and RPO periods. Hours, minutes, and real time. Backup and restore is a strategy that you can use if your RTO and RPO are in the period of hours. It's cheap and simple. If it's okay for your service to be offline for hours, then you can use one server. If there is a disaster, you can take the time to restore the server, install the software, put your code on it, and get it running. No rush. The same goes for the database. Just restore from backup, even if it was three hours ago. Another better option is to use an active-passive strategy, which is used when your RTO and RPO are in the space of minutes. Active-passive strategies can get very complex, but at the core, active-passive strategies are about having an active version of your resources and a passive version of your resources on standby, ready to be used if the active version fails. Like on a football match, when the main player gets injured, there is another player warmed up in the bench, ready to enter the game as a replacement. On an active-passive strategy, we would have our main server and our main database, the active ones, facing the users. We will also have an identical copy of the server and database running on maybe less powerful machines, on standby. The active database will be replicating all its data to the passive database to keep it in sync. Now with this architecture, if the active server or database go bye-bye, we can really quickly switch to the passive server and database. That should give us enough time to bring the more powerful active server back up. Or we would give more resources to the passive server to support all the traffic. The golden standard and something that is a bit more expensive and complex is the active-active strategy. The active-active strategy is what most companies use. And thanks to platforms like AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure, a single full-stack developer can create a highly available application with a couple of clicks. The active-active strategy is used when your RTO and RPO are near real time, when you want zero downtime and near zero data loss. With an active-active strategy, you will run many copies of the same server side by side, and you will put a load balancer between your users and the servers. The load balancer is the one in charge of getting the request from the user and forwarding the request to an available server. If a server dies, the load balancer will just ignore the dead server and forward the request to a server that can handle it. But now the risk is in the load balancer. Since it's only one, if it dies, our application dies as well. So what we can do is have two load balancers. But if we do this, we would have to have something to monitor the health of the load balancers, to update our DNS records in case one of them fails. As you can see, things are starting to get more complex, but also more cool. And we haven't even talked about databases and how we might need to have a read-only replica or even sharding. Even though I love talking about cloud architecture and system design, I'm gonna stop myself here. And you let me know in the comments if you would like me to talk more about backends, databases, and scaling. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe and leave a like. And if you want to learn to code, you want to do it for free, you want to do it with me, click the link below and I will see you there. Thank you for watching. Stay free. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.